What happens when you take the fancy tech of the Sony Cinema line, the portability of the Sony Alpha line, and smash them together in a sexy little silver box? You get one of the most insane bang for buck cinema cameras on planet Earth, the Sony FX30, AKA the Baby Venice. Okay, so maybe calling the FX30 a baby Venice is a little dramatic, but it made for a great YouTube title, and the camera does offer some really cool stuff. In simple terms, the FX30 is a small cinema camera with amazing build quality, beautiful image quality, and it's relatively affordable for the list of specs that Sony was able to cram inside of it. Recently, I went on a little trip to Colorado with this Silverback Gorilla, and I visited one of my best friends and got some creamy test footage along the way. I gotta say, massive shout out to my buddy Tucker Anderson for loaning me his FX30 for this trip. Tucker, I hardly know her, okay? I am Tucker Anderson. I'm a freelancer, I DP, I grip and gaff. What do you love most? about the camera. Easily my favorite feature of the FX30 is the autofocus. I started out on a Sony camera, it was the Sony a7 II. There was nothing that ever like wowed me about the autofocus. I would usually end up flipping it off and just going to manual. A close second uh, has got to be also the form factor. I just think it looks pretty sexy. It does. And it makes me want to shoot with it. News Shooter put out a great article on the FX30 comparing it to other cinema cameras in the same realm as the FX30 and it's pretty interesting stuff. I'm gonna pull it up on my laptop because I don't wanna memorize it. So the FX30 is $1,800 USD, brand new. The Canon C70, another super 35 miller, miller meter, think about it. The C70 is $5,500 and they shoot similar specs and the Sony's autofocus is better, sorry. No need to fight, it's okay, don't start a war. Then you got the Red Komodo, which is, you know, it's got different specs. It shoots in red raw, which is an amazing codec. Doesn't have great autofocus, that's six Gs. And the Pocket 6K Pro, which is 2,500, a little more expensive as well. After seeing those comparisons, it makes $1,800 look pretty affordable especially when you consider the fact that you get 4K up to 120 frames per second, dual native ISO, great autofocus, built-in IBIS, a fan to prevent overheating. What other ones is there? Full-size HDMI, S-Log3. And once a week, the camera will whisper into your ear that it loves you and that you're handsome. It's pretty cool tech, honestly. But you know what would make your camera think you're even more cute? This week's sponsor, Cuts Clothing. Oh. Check out this hoodie, pretty cool, huh? So if you've watched even a singular video of mine over the past four or five years, whatever it's been, you've realized that I have absolutely zero fashion sense. Thank the Lord that Cuts Clothing came in for the rescue. They make high quality, minimalistic, kind of athletic looking as well, threads for guys and girls. Their clothes are super comfy to wear, but they're still professional enough where you can go meet with prospective clients, you can wear them on shoots. Do you feel like wearing it will help you make more money and live a better life? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that like probably people will just throw money at me when I walk down the street, yeah. which is pretty cool. Click my link in the description to check out their incredible line of clothes and use code Zach Mayfield for 15% off your order. Don't cut me any deeper, the try cuts clothing. I'm deleting my channel. I would say pretty much the only thing I've been disappointed with on it is uh, the low light performance. Now at the base ISOs of 800 and 2500, I find it, it performs pretty well. Um, there's a little bit of noise in the shadows, but if you overexpose by say half a stop or a little bit more, uh, it usually goes away. But beyond ISO 3200, the noise is quite noticeable. Uh, it's not a deal breaker for me because I usually don't find myself shooting in scenarios with extreme low light. Personally, I like how this camera looks physically. The shape and the color and everything looks really awesome, looks professional. But some of the design choices they made in the build of this camera make absolutely no sense to me. First of all, I gotta get this one off my chest. Oh, it's right here. Yeah, the camera has no EVF. It just hurts my soul, and I have to talk about it because the a7S III, this camera that I'm using right now, has such a beautiful nine point million something dot viewfinder that's absolutely gorgeous and extremely useful, especially when you're shooting outdoors. There are times where it's like almost impossible to see this tiny ass little mirrorless camera screen, and just closing it up and putting the EVF over my face is so enjoyable, so useful. Nextly, the idea for building the FX30 with essentially a cage already built into the body is a really cool idea. The fact that you don't have to invest in a cage 
is awesome. It's saving you money, honestly. But the bad part is some of the mounting holes on the cage part of the body are useless. <laughs> and like, if you would mount something there, it would just block the record button or the top of the camera. I don't know. I just feel like they should have been more thoughtful for where they place the holes. Be careful where you put your holes, Sony. That's what I'm trying to say. And my last two negatives about this camera are the fact that it has no true shutter angle, which is just so weird for a cinema camera. And the fact that you have a 1.6X crop in 4K 120. Now, both of these aren't a huge deal. They're honestly just minor annoyances that you can work around, but they're still bugaboos. And you deserve the cold hard facts. You're handsome and you deserve respect, okay? This is kind of my last like doozy question, but I was thinking about like where this camera fits into like the market. Like you said in the beginning of this interview, like you when you pull out your 6K in front of your client, it's all rigged out and they're like, whoa, this is a real camera, you know? Like we kind of hear that term a lot, but it does mean something to have an impressive rig. But in my mind, I'm like, do cameras like the FX30 mean that we're kind of moving away from that? Or is it just filling like a new gap in the camera space? Like, what do you think? I think that someone could pick up this camera and easily shoot very high budget client work on it, um, comparable to what I've shot on the 6K if they know exactly kind of what they're doing. Um, but I also do think it mostly fills sort of a new section that was missing, particularly in Sony's lineup. They've always had kind of their very high end video stuff with the FX3 and the FX6 and FX9s. And then they've had their photo bodies, particularly their crop bodies that do video, but are not necessarily very good for it. Um, so I think it kind of fills a spot of like anyone new to filmmaking. It's a great price and the quality for the price really is the best, I think, um, in Sony's lineup. At the end of the day, full frame is mostly just marketing hype that tries to get us to spend more money on cameras when Super 35 or Crop Sensor is more than enough for most situations. If you can get over that hype, the FX30 is a powerful little beast that'll be able to accomplish pretty much any video need you can throw at it. Maybe my manager will let me get one if I ask nicely. Shake if you want me to have an FX30 as a B camera. Yes, thank you so much. If you want to download all the FX30 B-roll from this video, all the fun stuff I shot in Colorado, including this cool raging dance moment, become a YouTube channel member today. You just click buttons and give money. It's really not too hard. If not, subscribe, smash dislike, or be... <laughs> if not, subscribe, smash dislike, or be... <laughs> Either way, text me when you get home so I know you're safe. Watch out for deer, and maybe I'll see you at NAB 2023. I don't know yet, but have a good one.